Well, President Obama sitting down for a beer at the White House with Harvard professor Henry Gates and Cambridge police officer James Crowley this Thursday night, hoping for some closure in a dispute inflamed by the president's own words. President Obama initially accusing the Cambridge cops of acting stupidly while investigating a break-in at the professor's home. That ignited a media firestorm, resulting in the president having to come out and try to dial that back, but not apologizing. And the whole break-in, which was reported by a neighbor, wasn't really a break-in. It was the professor trying to get into his own home, but the door was jammed. Uh, was reported by a neighbor, and that neighbor's 911 call has just been released. I don't know what's happening. I just had an uh, older woman uh, standing here, and she had noticed two gentlemen trying to get in a house. I was just calling because she was a concerned neighbor. Well, Professor Gates was arrested for disorderly conduct, not for breaking and entering. Gates accuses the officer, Sergeant Crowley, of racial profiling, and now one member of Congress is demanding that President Obama apologize for the shots he took at the Cambridge police. Congressman Thaddeus McCotter is a Republican from Michigan. He is my guest now. Good morning, sir. Good morning. All right, so now, you know, we kind of thought this was just about over. Heard the 911 call. The woman didn't mention anything about race. That suggests that the cop wasn't really trying to racially profile anybody when he showed up. Uh, they're going to have a beer on Thursday. Everyone seems to be dialing it back. Why is that not enough for you? Well, I don't think it's enough for the American people. The presidential precedent that was set is very dangerous. What you've had is a situation where the president had a friend involved in a local police incident. The president went on national television, admitted that he had a bias, admitted that he didn't have knowledge of the facts, and then prejudged the officer's conduct. This is the principle that we have to make sure is forward, is that that is not acceptable behavior by a president of the United States towards a private citizen. And if it is allowed to stand, if everything is papered over with a nice photo op, that principle will be set in place. And then the question becomes, who, who is going to be next? Now, Sergeant Crowley is game for the beer at the White House, and we expect him to be there on Thursday night. Your point is, even if it's okay with him, if he's willing to say, all right, let bygones be bygones, uh, not to mention Professor Gates, th th that the American people need more. It is the principle that has to be defended, that a president cannot do this to a private citizen. And I think that that is the fundamental goal here, is to make sure that principle is upheld. The president, again, admitted bias, admitted a lack of knowledge of the facts, and prejudged a private citizen in the conduct of his duties. Now, for Officer Crowley's point of view, he has potential legal or professional ramifications to his admission that he would agree with the president that he overreacted or that he acted stupidly. The officer has maintained that he has not. And I think that this is something that he should not be coaxed or coerced into changing that unless it is of his own volition. Well, that's the thing. The president, when he came out to the microphones on Friday, definitely dialed back at the part about they acted stupidly. And he said, you know, I should have recalibrated my words. As for your second point about whether Sergeant Crowley and the Cambridge police overreacted, not so much. And I think we have that soundbite queued up. Take a listen. In my choice of words, I think I unfortunately uh, gave an impression uh, that I was maligning the Cambridge Police Department or Sergeant Crowley specifically. Uh, and I could have calibrated those words differently. And I told this to uh, Sergeant Crowley. Uh, I continue to believe, based on what I have heard, that uh, there was an overreaction in uh, pulling Professor Gates uh, out of his home. What specifically is, is your objection to that piece of the president's message? The substance of his remarks remain the same. He prejudged the officer's conduct, and he reiterated it. This is an officer that was trained in diversity. This is one who trains other members of the department about how to handle incidents like this. And to have it on his record that he overreacted, let alone acted stupidly, is to impugn his professional conduct. And to have it prejudged by a president of the United States, who again admitted bias in the instance, and who said he didn't have a knowledge of the facts, is not a precedent we should allow to stand. So now are you, you are actually introducing a resolution in the House demanding that the president apologize? We're calling upon the president to apologize for prejudging the officer and to retract his statement. I think that this is honest advice to the president because many of us were shocked that he went forward after the first two lines of I have a bias and I don't know all the facts. We thought it would end with therefore it is not appropriate for me to comment on this time. 
So from my point of view, if the Congress is a separate equal branch of government, does not look at presidential encroach, encroachers into the private lives of citizens and prejudge them ahead of time on that basis, there'll be no effective check and balance. Now, what is your response, Congressman, to those who would say, don't you have anything better to do on Capitol Hill right now? Congressional approval ratings are through the floor. We got health care reform up there that some people want you to stop. Other people want you to push through. We got an economy that's in shambles, trying to rebound, but nonetheless, serious problems, serious unemployment. To those who would say, could you keep your eye on the ball and not, to, not go around wasting our time demanding apologies? Let them, let them have the beer and move on. What's your response? Well, Megan, first of all, I would say they should bring that argument to the president who raised this issue and has continued to pursue it and is having a meeting on Thursday over a beer with it while his number one signature issue, health care, is on the floor. But in fairness to the president and everyone else, we can do many things in Congress at the same time. Yesterday, I introduced a bill to apply human rights to trade with communist countries. So this is a Congress that can do many things. It is a president that can do many things. But one thing you should never do is prejudge a citizen's actions where you admit bias and a lack of knowledge of the facts. Understood. Congressman Thaddeus McCotter, thanks so much for coming on uh, with your insights on it. We appreciate it. Thanks.